Hi friends, Tracy here from the Sewing Channel. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome. Have you ever wanted to make an illusion quilt, but you just didn't know how to do it, where to start, and it looks really hard too, right? Let me tell you, it's totally not hard. It's beginner friendly. Enough talking already, let's get busy. The first thing that you need to understand when making a 3D quilt, a cube, 3D quilt anyways, is there's three colors involved. There's a dark, there's a medium, and there's a light. That's very important when picking out your colors. Now, if you're doing just a three color quilt, which we are not going to do today, we're gonna to do a scrappy 3D cube quilt, just because I have so many scraps, right? And I know you do too. <laughs> so if you're doing a three color quilt, what you wanna do is find three fabrics that coordinate a light, a medium and a dark. You're going to get out that smartphone and take a picture and then you're going to go into edit, click black and white and see how that translates in black and white. Now when you take that picture, this should be the darkest color, this color next and then of course the light color is the lightest color. That is going to give you the most definition in that 3D illusion. Here's what this block right here looks like on black and white. You can see how it translates and how defined the colors are. And that's what you're looking for in all of your scraps. If I was going to make this block right here and only use three colors, I would of course buy yardage in those three colors and then cut them into my strips. If you don't wanna do scrappy and you just wanna do three colors, just go ahead and cut your strips out of the yardage. If you don't want to use scraps, you can always grab a couple jelly rolls and make this quilt out of jelly rolls. It's perfect for that. This one right here is Christmas and typically they add in darks, mediums, and lights so you should have no problem picking those out. This is just an idea for you if you don't want to dig into your scraps. This is a bag of scraps from a quilt I did a while ago. I absolutely adored this fabric so I saved every little bit that I could of this fabric line. Now how cool would that be if I had a bunch of these bags from all of my quilts and I took scrap pieces out to make this cube quilt of all of my favorite fabric. It's a great idea to use up scraps that you absolutely love that you don't know where else to put them. So let's take a look together and see what I can find in here. What we're looking for is one long strip that needs to be 10 and a half to 11 inches long by two and a half inches wide. And we need it times two, but I'll show you what that looks like here in a sec. This fabric is absolutely gorgeous. So this could work right here, either one of these right here. I'm looking for contrast. I'm looking for light and dark. Ooh, that's pretty right there. That would be a great dark. I think that this would be a great medium, maybe. But I will absolutely take a picture though to see first because I'm not gonna cut this up if it's not gonna work ahead of time. So I'm gonna lay these out first, take a picture, show you what that looks like, and then we'll pick from there. So these are the two scraps that I chose right here. And let me pop a picture and show you what that looked like when I laid everything out. You can totally see your darks and your mediums when you do this. Never leave this step out when you are trying to really contrast colors. It will never fail you. And everyone has a smartphone, right? think they do nowadays yeah I I think they do <laughs> I don't know so now I have my dark and I have my medium now I need to find my light now I could go about finding the lights in a few different ways I could just purchase a jelly roll like this one here and it has a lot of white on white which still makes it sort of scrappy you know. Or I could go through my bag of low volume prints that I have, and I know I have a ton of scraps in these. That's what I ultimately ended up doing. I dug and I dug, and I found this right here, and I cut what I needed. You know, it really didn't matter when it came down to it, if it had a print on it, or even if it had color. I love this one right here. This one has a bunch of confetti on it. 
that would make a great light low volume fabric and you would still have contrast if I use something like this in this block. The first thing I'm going to do is press my scraps because you know they've been in that bag for quite some time. You always want to press whatever you're about to cut because you just don't want any mistakes or any surprises down the road. So I always tend to press always before you cut. Now this is the formula to make one block. Not this size though. This one was made with three and a half inch strips, but you totally can do three and a half if you want. But I'm going to do two and a half for the sake of ease of jelly roll and all those other things. So first you'll start off by making a nice clean edge here, which I already have. So I'm going to skip that step and I am going to go right for two and a half inches. And remember, I only need like 10 and a half and this is 10 and a half on my ruler. So all of this up to there. So there's one dark two and a half. Now I need to cut another dark at two and a half inches wide and about 10 and a half to 11 inches in length. I'm just going to cut like so Go over, put this back in that scrap bag. <laughs> Flip this and go two and a half. So there's my two and a half inches by ten and a half inches in dark. And then here is the same width and length in my light. Now let's go for the medium cut. This one I need to be careful of because I have to make sure that I get two strips out of this. Even though the salvage is in there, I'm still going to use it because I think I can get that hidden, but we'll see. <laughs> to make one block, this is what you'll need. Two strips of dark, two strips of medium, and two strips of the light. The next step is to pair these together. Take one dark and one light and pair those together. Now we're going to sew down one side, so go ahead and add a few pins in just so that you don't get off track. We have the dark and the light. Now we need to do the dark and the medium. And then you have left the medium and the light, so go ahead and put those two together. Take these three strip sets over to your sewing machine and sew a quarter inch seam allowance down the side that you pinned. Once everything is all sewn up, then go over and open up those seams and give it a good hot press. Now it's time to take those three strips and cut them at 60 degree angles. It's easier than you think. Let me give you a visual of what those cuts look like. This is one strip, this is another, and this is another. Remember, we have three strips all together. This is cut at a 60 degree angle. We only need two of these triangles out of each of those strip sets. That's why you really don't need a whole lot of one scrap to make one block. And you can see right here with one of these strip sets right here that I probably cut more than I needed, but that's okay too. If you are a quilter, you undoubtedly have some type of ruler somewhere in your stash that has a 60 degree angle on it. If you don't by chance have a ruler with the 60 degree angle, one of your mats actually has a 60 degree angle on it. So you may use that instead of the ruler if that helps. This is my 60 degree line right here that's on my mat but I'm going to use my ruler because I have one. So here I want to show you this ruler. It has a 15, 30, 45. There's our 60 that we want. And then this is a 90. And then it has it again over here. So that way, if you have to swap your ruler to the opposite side of what you're doing, you can do that as well. Here's my 60 line right there. 
I'm going to line this along the edge of this strip set. The one thing you want to make sure of when you have your 60 degree line right here and you're measuring it along the bottom of this fabric, you don't want to go off of this fabric because that will take one of the tips off. Like if you cut like that, it wouldn't work because it would cut one of the tips off. So you want to bring it back so that you can clear all this because that's going to be our first cut. Once you have that 60 degree line right there, hold your ruler down and then cut that angle. Now all you're going to do from here, this point, take your ruler and the 60 down here, you're going to line it up along the bottom right there of that strip set. What I'm doing here is making sure that I'm at the very tip top point where I can't go anymore. So I'm lining up the 60 and I'm also lining up right up against that point, the top of our triangle. Once you have that and everything is lined up nicely, you are going to cut. Keep in mind also that you can make a template ahead of time with your 60 degree marks out of cardboard or something and you can lay that down every time and that may help you to have a better cut every single time identical to the one that you just cut. I'm going to turn this back up this way so that that 60 degree line is right along there. And the tip is just barely showing there. Hold the ruler down and cut. This right here is extra, so this can go back in the scrap pile. All I need for each block is two from each strip set but they have to be opposite. You have the dark here and the dark here, and then they're swapped. You're taking it from that point with that 60, and you're just shifting it like so. So you should have six pieces. Now that this block is all done though, there is a very special way that you need to sew it so that you don't make yourself crazy. There's no Y seams involved, so don't worry about that. It's very strategic. So let's work on that next. Here are all my scrappy cubes up on my design wall so I can see what I have. I think I really like it scrappy as opposed to just three colors, you know, I don't know. I like the scrappy. Tell me in the comments if you like the three colors only as a whole quilt, or if you like all of the scrappy together. With this type of quilt block, you don't want to sew everything together in the pie shape. You need to sew them special. Now this special way really isn't special at all. It's just simply sewing in a different direction rather than straight across. I'm gonna pop a diagram here and show you that this area right here is what's going to be sewn first. What that looks like is taking this one right here, putting right sides together, and pinning right away on that side because I don't wanna lose that that's where I'm at and I don't wanna accidentally sew the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin that right away. Now you're gonna sew like normal, a quarter inch, and then when you open that back up, you're gonna be here, and then you're gonna sew this piece over here, right sides together. So let's do that so we can see what that looks like. I'm lining up seam allowance to seam allowance to make sure I can get the most even that I possibly can be on this quilt. You need to be very careful because all this cut is on the bias and it's a very stretchy edge. So you may wanna glue it or you may even want to starch your fabric prior to cutting. I'm going to start at the point first and then sew a quarter inch. There we have those two pieces together. I think I'm going to press to the side on these. I think when I worked it out earlier that it was pressing to the side was a lot easier, but 
you can figure that out for yourself whether or not you like it pressed to the side or not. So here then you have these two pieces. Now I'm going to flip this over onto here and I'm going to sew a quarter inch. Now you can press in between. You don't have to just take it and go with it. Now when you lay this on here, you want to make sure that you're hanging this tip off about a quarter inch. Otherwise your blocks are going to be messed up. That's just a little tip for you. And there's that. Now I am going to press this. Here I have these little tails hanging off, these little dog ears, and those I'll cut later. But right now I'm just working on this row. So I'm going to place this back up here like so, and then I'm going to work on these three pieces. And once I get those three pieces connected, then I will connect them to this piece right here. So you're sewing at a diagonal instead of horizontal or vertical. Let me get this half piece together and this half piece together, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to connect those three pieces together. So here I have each half piece sewn together because remember we're connecting them diagonally so that way we don't have any Y seams. What you'll do next is go ahead and clip off all of these little rabbit dog ears because we don't want that bulk within our quilt. Now what you'll do is take this block right here and flip it onto this block so that those seams are nice and even. But look at what it looks like when you take it to the sewing machine. It looks like it's off center and off balance and everything. But that's okay. That's exactly what we want. Because when we sew that and flip it back, it's going to be right in alignment. When you sew that together, you want to make sure before you sew it that that dog ear is sticking out there. And if you flip that right there, that little red one is sticking out from there. That will ensure that you have a nice even block. Isn't that nice? <laughs> I love it. So then I would go ahead and press this out and you can press it open or to the side, however you see fit, and then continue adding on. Now this has been pressed, and before I go any further, I'll just trim off these little dog ears. So once that's sewn, then it's time to connect it here. And it's just like before, you're gonna take it and flip it right on to that seam right sides together and you can see it looks awkward again but that's exactly what we want go ahead and press it what happened and if you sew it and attach it to the wrong piece you're gonna have to do what i have to do unpick <laughs> and re-sew it oh never fails right there's always an unpicked project somewhere along the way. Well, that just tells me, gives me a little tip that I need to slow down and really look at what I'm connecting. Oh, if it's connected here, so I don't know how I did that. I'm going to have to look back at the camera footage and see how I did that so wrong. I, it was this piece. I, I must have had this up there crooked when I first was showing you. <laughs> Anyways, these two need to be connected. Like so, like so. Now I've already cut my dog ears off, so I'm gonna have to be mindful. There we go. That's right. Let's press that out <laughs> and see what that looks like. Okay. There, that looks much better. So you can see here how we connect those all together nicely. Now it's time to connect all these and then it's time to connect these as two big long rows. It's that simple, friends.
I have so much more for you to explore on my channel. Be sure to click one of the links that's around me right now so we can keep learning together. Until next time on the Sewing Channel, take care.